my dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. When we plan a new work or ministry, one of the first things that we do is to train the personnel, human resources required for it. God had a plan for human redemption. The plan was to send his son into the world. For this mission to be realized, God needed a womb that was sinless and Mary was the person who was chosen and prepared to collaborate in this mission. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of our Blessed Mother. The dogma of the Immaculate Conception says that Mary was conceived without original sin. We are not talking about the conception of Jesus by Mary. That is called virginal conception. Rather, we are talking of the conception of Mary by Saint Anne. Pope Pius IX on 8th December 1854, in the document entitled In Affabilis Deus, solemnly defined that from the very first moment of her conception, Mary was preserved from original sin thanks to the merits of her son, Jesus Christ. Well, it is not a dogma that can easily be traced back to the scripture. Nevertheless, we might get a glimpse of the Immaculate Conception from the Gospel reading of today, where the angel greets Mary as the favored one of the Lord. The angel addresses her, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. This is something that we find attested also in the Quran. In chapter 3, verse 42, we read, The angel said, Mary, God has selected you and purified you. He has selected you over all the women. How could Mary alone of all humankind be without original sin? We have only one answer. The answer given by the angel to Mary when she asked, How could I bear a child when I have no husband? The angel tells her, With God, nothing will be impossible. Yes, with God, nothing is impossible. And so it was possible for God to make Mary to be conceived without the stain of sin. This was affirmed by the Franciscan theologian John Danscotos with three Latin words, tequit, putuit, and fetid. It was fitting that God could do this, God could do this, and God did it. Now, dear friends, what does this solemnity imply for you and for me? The solemnity says that Mary was preserved from sin right from the beginning of her life on account of the favor shown to her by God in view of the mission that was to be entrusted to her. It means that by God's grace, she was shielded from original sin because she was chosen to give flesh to the sinless one. And so, dear friends, it's all about a provident God, a God who prepares all of us for our future tasks. God prepares his children for the tasks that await them, the tasks that have been assigned to them even before they were born. We are told that we have a God who equips us with all the graces, both natural and supernatural, necessary for the completion of the task that He has in mind for us. All that is expected of each one of us is to surrender ourselves like Mary to the Divine Will. O Mary, who was immaculately conceived, intercede for us that we may respond to God as you did. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Behold, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word.